Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. Welcome to Modified episode number 16, where we share with you four drives that have been accessorised and customised for everyday use and four wheel driving. Rightio, folks, I'll introduce you to the owner of this FJ, Andrew. G'day, Ronnie, how, how you going? Mate? Yeah, good, mate. How you going? All right, um, so how are you feeling? You had a long drive? Yeah, a bit of a shift. long drive, long shift. Just yeah. finished work and uh, headed out to come meet you and get some people to have a look at the FJ. Beautiful. All right, uh, well, do you want to tell our audience just the specs of the vehicle? Oh, it's a 2011 Toyota FJ Cruiser. It runs a 4 litre V6. It's basically stock. Do they come with factory lockers? Yes, it does. Uh, it's got, it comes with a factory e-locker and it's... Oh, I've got factory e-locker. E yeah, yeah, factory e-locker in this. So it's just running the e-locker. But it also has the uh, A-Track on it, so active traction controls. We'll go through all, every aspect of the vehicle and we'll start with the bar work. What do you got, Andrew? So basically I've got a deluxe ARB winch compatible front bar. I changed out the uh, halogen globes from the indicator lights, the LED lights, oh, uh, just because it went through a ones. mud crossing yep. and they filled up with water and the globe blew every time and the fuses kept going. Oh. Um, and then I also changed the original fog lights out for the uh, halo ring fog lights with the LED in the middle of them. Is that for the same reason? Uh, well, no, they were actually really good, but I just like the uh, aesthetics of the uh, DRLs at the front of the vehicle. It just gives more visibility. I see you got a sausage maker here. Yeah, it's a sausage maker. So sometimes you get a free kangaroo, but at the same time, yeah. it, it, it's handy um, yeah. that I hold my, all my fishing rods, especially on those long trips. Do a lot of fishing? Yeah, no, I, I started fishing not too long ago, but I've, I've done quite a bit now and yeah. very much into it. Well, if you're very much into fishing, you know a lot more than I do. Yeah. Fishing. <laughs> bash plate underneath? Yeah, so basically a full bash plate underneath uh, from ARB as well. It runs from underneath all the way to the transfer case. And, um, oh, yeah. it's a long one. It's a long one, yeah. So it runs all the way down and yeah. it's, it's been used, that's for sure. I've hit okay. it a few times. Yeah. You can see a few dents and dings and everything. And your winch? So the winch is a worn 12,000 pound winch. Um, originally it was a cable, but at the same time I didn't really like the cable. It's, it's tough on my hands, especially even when you're wearing gloves and yeah. it, I found it a bit dangerous. Um, so I changed it for the Dymena rope and it's uh, 30 meters rather than the 20, 20 meter one. So oh, I changed so you upgrade the length one. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, why not go all out at the same time? Are you find it works all right in the rollers? Uh, I, I have to change them. I've noticed the last time I winch, uh, it was getting caught in these little slots here. Oh, in the gaps Yeah, there. in little gaps. And it was starting to, not rip, but you can see fray it fray a little cords. bit. So side rail or rock slider? Yep, so basically these are the stock rock sliders that come with the FJ, but I've added the additional side, just the steps. Um, so these are from Pure FJ over in yep. the United States, and they just bolt on. There's a couple of holes on the uh, factory okay. uh, rock sliders, and you just bolt them straight on, and you can unbolt them if you want. But I leave them on purely because it saves the panel. So this is the first thing that hits if I slide. Yeah, you got additional, yeah. yeah. So um, you can see it's it's bent, and I've used them quite a bit, and you see the scratches on it. Is this uh, something you sprayed on? Yeah, so basically every time I've gone through the bush, I've scratched the, uh, the flares, the, the flares uh, and they were plastic. And basically, I couldn't buff them out. They were just really scratched up. So this is bed liner from, uh, I think it's Dulux paint. Um, and I just bed lined it, and um, now it doesn't scratch. Yeah, well, I didn't notice it until I was down here. Yeah. So this we talked about before was your dog leashes, though? Yeah, so they're just my dog leashes. The reason why it has to be cable is because I've got three Siberian Huskies that love to run, and they just tend to run off every now and then. <laughs> Snapping a rope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the roof rack. Basically, I like change out the uh, stock roof rack uh, just because the stock one was pretty useless. Had a nice little curve on it. It looked really nice and all, but it, it was curved. You, everything that you put on was never straight. It, oh. it tends to lean up. Okay. So basically, I changed it out for what's called a front runner low profile roof rack. The reason why I needed a low profile is because uh, I needed it to fit under the garage in the house. I basically hold my shovel there, but I can hold it at the back as well. Um, but for today, I just left it there just because uh, I wasn't going to carry a fishing yeah. rod. I normally fold one of my long fishing rods on there. Okay. How so big is the awning? The awning's a two, and, uh, two meter by three meter awning uh, from King's. Yeah, I got that for free, so chucked oh. it on. <laughs> Bargain. <laughs> the lights and comms. So Let's start for, with your lights. For my lights, uh, basically I've got an X-Vision light bar as well as a 22 inch eBay light bar. These are Priner's Great Whites LEDs. They're kind of like copies of the ARBs, yeah, see, yeah. Uh, but they're actually a lot better than the uh, copy ones. Oh, so you've got lights up here as well? Yep, you can buy from Pure FJ, they're called crawl lights. The actual bracket is called a crawl light bracket. The actual symbol FJ actually lights up as well. 
Um, but basically I use these to uh, sh shine a light on the sides where the kangaroos might jump out because I've hit a few kangaroos uh, now with this FJ and uh, yeah. it's purely because the last minute they jump out. But with these on, I can actually see them just before they jump. And back to the front here. What? So basically at the front here, uh, I've changed the halogen globes out. Uh, they're now LED. So it's all in one, the ballast is all in one inside the actual housing of the light and yeah. it's far brighter than the, uh, the halogen globes. The LEDs are a lot brighter and you actually see a pure white light. Other lights, so you got one on the side there. Yep. And you got two on the back here. Basically, I've got one on this side and the other side and in the back, all of them are run on the same switch. Uh, they're my camping lights. Oh, the main three ones, yeah. Yeah, the main three ones run on my camping light. The rear one is also connected to the reversing light as well. So I can either switch between the two. It just okay. automatically does it on yeah. the relay. Each one of these lights is connected to a dimmer switch. So while you're camping, if it's too bright, you actually dim them all down so that a bit they're not so aggressive while you're at night and you're trying to chill. That's a bloody um, good idea. And then also, if you're camping and you don't want to turn the light off from the switch, you can actually turn the switch and it clicks and it turns them off completely. Awesome. So they're all wired inside and outside, so it works independently from one another as well. And uh, this light here is uh, my beacon light. It flashes yellow in cases of emergency or when I oh, pull over okay. so people can actually see me a bit better. So it's, it's wide to your hazard? Yeah. Tires and lift now. So we'll start with your tires, Andrew. So basically I've got the uh, new Discovery STT Pros. Uh, they're a 80% mud terrain tyre and a 20% road, mainly for when I go off-roading and stuff like that as well. They're actually a 28570 R17 just on a stock Toyota alloy rim. So looking at 232 point something? Yeah, 32 point something inch tyres. Yeah, they feel pretty soft. How long you had these for? Uh, so they're pretty new. I've only had them for maybe two months, three months. But they've done an excellent job. This is on my second pair of tyres. I had the other STs, Cooper STs. And oh, I went up to the STT yeah. Pros. However, a bit louder on the road, uh, but not to the point that it's uncomfortable. And your rims are standard Toyotas? Yep, so they're just a standard Toyota alloy rim. I haven't decided to change them. I just thought, well... Are they, se are they 17 inch rims? 17 inch rims. So these actually 33s then? Yeah, they're actually, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah they're 33s. 33 inches, yeah. And your suspension? So the suspension is a Dobinson 3 inch all round, coils and springs, and I just done a 3 inch lift. I originally had Tough Dogs 2 inch lift with a 1 inch spacer, um, but then I found heaps of problems with putting the spacer in. Oh, yeah. Basically, I changed them out to a 3 inch lift, and um, it's been working fantastic, giving me enough flex and the height that I needed to from basically from a two. Uh, main reason that I went for a three inch rather than a two inch lift is because there's a lot of weight on this car, especially when I'm fully loaded with a rooftop so tent. It comes yeah, down it sags down. Sags down yeah. And plus, uh, later on, the front of the car, it's got three batteries. So the oh, weight yeah. of that <laughs> weighs it down as well. Yeah, it weigh a bit more. Did you drop the front diff? No, I didn't. I yeah, didn't need to. Uh, I've actually contacted a few people about that, um, including people from here in Perth over the United States, everywhere around. There have been companies that have told me I have to do a drop, a diff drop as well. But then there were heaps of companies over the United States and here, including Malaga Suspensions. Didn't have to. Have a look at the power plant. Sure. One, two, three. Yeah. So basically, for the FJ here, I'm running three batteries in this car. Which one's the Which one's the original? So the original, well, the original's this one. That one there. Yep. That's um, the tightest looking one. Yeah. So this is a small <laughs> one with a stock FJ. It's here. Yes. But then you've moved it over there. Correct. To okay. Yeah. Right. And yeah. So it's, this is my cranking battery, uh, and then I've got two auxiliary batteries, both 100 amps hours each. That's total 200 amp hours that I've got, and it's running off the. Uh, CTEC isolator, which charges the batteries as I drive as well, up to 20 amps as I drive. Uh, just because the smart alternators in the FJ tend to not charge the secondary batteries, um, just on a pure isolator, um, it just cuts it out, so it doesn't actually charge the battery. It might just keep yeah. it steady. Um, so you need something like a smart CTEC charger to bump the ampage back up and yeah. not charge it. A lot of the new alternators do, though. Yeah. So is this your? So Total that's, cutoff switch? Yeah, so that's the main cutoff switch. When I take the car in for a servicing, I don't want Toyota or whoever's doing the uh, work on the car to fiddle around with the electronics. Um, so it's one turn, turns off everything that's on the auxiliary battery. Some horns? Yep, so basically I've changed the horns. The original horn was a bit of a, a girly toot toot horn, uh, especially for a Tonka truck. I really wanted to make it yeah. sound like a truck. So I've changed them into the Heller horns as well as the Heller um, air horn as well. Uh, I've changed the original paper filter to the K&M air filter just to give a bit of airflow running through it. Um, it was a bit restrictive with the paper filter, I noticed that. 
yeah. um, changing it to Kane Anfield, I've actually gained a bit of power and I actually feel it, especially in the dunes. Yeah, it's breathing better. Yep. And you got, is that your diff breather kit over there? Yep, so this is the diff breather kit. So it's for the uh, transfer case, the diffs, and the gearbox. So four breathers. Yep. Apart from what's in here, the exhaust, have you done anything to? Yeah, so basically I've cut the muffler out of it. It was a bit restrictive, and also I wanted to make a bit of a grunt to the noise as I go up the hills. So I changed it to a, a high flow muffler, and it's, yeah, it's okay. doing an excellent job at it. So it's got the original pipe, and you just changed the muffler? Yeah. Rightio, we're at the back of the vehicle now, at the back of the FJ. We'll have a look at what's on here before we open her up, eh? Sure. All right. So I take it this is a bike rack? Yeah, it is a bike rack. This is a custom bike rack uh, that I built with my old man. Uh, basically, we cut high lift jack and uh, attached it to the high lift jack mount and welded a nice piece of steel across, which I just bolted the, the bike rack to it, purely because uh, all the other bike racks that I use um, actually bolt onto the uh, tow ball and I need the tow ball for towing, because I tow a camper at the same time. So I had to do it this way um, to idea. get away around it. Um, I just tie the treads to the wheel. Basically, it doesn't go anywhere. And, and, and that kind of braces it here. Yeah, it does well. brace in here, which actually worked really well. And your light guards? Yep, so basically I've got the light guards just to protect the lights uh, from anything, sticks, branches and stuff. Um, it's quite sturdy, but at the same time, it does protect it, but not to the point where it, it, it will break if, if I did yeah. hit something really hard. Two reversing cameras on the back here. So one... One up there. Yep, that's a permanent one that stays on. And this one down here uh, goes on when I turn on the ah, reversing. So the that's trailer. Trailer, yeah. So yeah. when I reverse, that, that goes on, but that one's permanently on. Purely because the uh, the rear window of the FJ is quite small. Let's open her up. All right, beautiful. Look at that. That is organised. Very organised. I'm, I'm quite OCD sometimes. So everything needs to be organised in a way where I can access it and know where everything is at all times. So it's a table down here? Yep, so basically the drawer slides. Uh, this comes with a full size table um, and it opens up to a full size table that you can just put down as well. Or you can just use it as a temporary table where you just make chopping stuff up or making yeah. coffee. So it, it's nice and easy and it's and it's easy to replace. I didn't want to cut, get a custom one. These drawers were built by custom installation. My top drawer here, I'm holding all my tools. So these are a full set of Stanley tools that I just carry around just in case. <coughs> and then through here, basically it's all my fishing gear. So, and then coffee. This is a 12 volt coffee maker. The missus loves it. I have to bring it or else. This thing here is a coffee maker? Yeah, so that's a 12 volt coffee maker. So you, you put it in. So you open that up, put the pot in, put the hot water in, oh, we put your cold water in, and then you plug that into your cigarette lighter, which I happen to have it here, and then you make your coffee in the morning. I was gonna go get my cup. Yeah. And then underneath, basically you've got the gas bottle from my cooker. So that's the uh, barbecue that I got. Yep. Um, and then all the extra stuff, so a bit of tools that I carry around, extra cable ties, you never know when you need to tie some stuff down, hooks and stuff for fishing and the essentials when you're camping, so your sunscreen, toothbrush, toothpaste, stuff like that. Yep. And of course, the compressor. Compressor? So, yeah, just a single one. And it just stores nicely in here. Customise the uh, oh. piping, so it comes out here. That's and cool. And it's set onto a regulator, so the pump goes through into a regulator, and uh, it's set at the moment at 42 psi, so once you hit 42 psi, it turns off, so you don't have to go in and out checking the tyres every now and then. Ah. So once it gets to 42, it just turns on and off and telling you that it's 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 full, the tyre's full. You disconnect, go to the next tyre. Yeah, you're an ideas man. Yeah. <laughs> fridge? So this is my uh, Iron Man Icebox 60 litre fridge. Comes out on the slider as well, custom built. And then underneath it is an extra drawer with all the cutlery that I might need while I'm out. If anyone ever decides to put a fridge on here, most people have problems with the, um, the wire as it comes out. And the way that I had an idea on how to fix it was using CNC cable. Ah. So when it comes out, the cable fo follows it. Yeah. And it doesn't, doesn't rub against anything and it doesn't get caught. So that way it's protected and doesn't get snapped or ripped. Very cool. In here, is the 2500 watt inverter maxed out at 5000 watts that runs 240 volts 2500 watt inverter peaks at 5000 yes. watts so i can actually connect uh, so you a run grinder a, you can run a, a vacuum cleaner off yep. it <laughs> i can run a vacuum cleaner yes it draws a lot of current 
Yeah. Um, but that's what you got three two, batteries. Yeah, three batteries. Andrew's interior of his FJ. And this thing looks like a aircraft carrier, <laughs> yeah, a bit of a fighter it, pilot. Yeah, <laughs> cockpit here. This is switches and stuff everywhere. <laughs> we'll start with the top. Okay, so basically this top bit is a pure FJ um, designed uh, shelf that you can buy. Uh, and I purchased it and I just recustomized it a little bit with a few holes and stuff yep. in there. Uh, basically it holds all my stuff that I need. So tissues, uh, that's my tire deflator. Um, underneath, I've cut holes to put cigarette lighter and a couple of uh, oh, USB chargers. Yep. Anything that I need, so if I put my phone on top, I can still charge my phone. Uh, this here is just a TomTom -tom GPS, yep. which just stays there permanently. Tire yeah. monitor? Yep, so that's a tire no, no, uh, monitor, which uh, monitors all four of my tires. It doesn't monitor the spare tire because that's not needed. What brand's that one? Uh, no, it's just a cheapo eBay one. Uh, it's worked so far. Um, yep. The only thing is you have to change the batteries. Oh, the just, external ones, yeah. yeah. Okay. In your comms, you got a unit in? Yeah, so I've got a unit in. Um, I like this comm purely because you can actually hit dual. So you can keep it on one channel, but it'll scan the second channel. So I, I run today channel 13 with you guys, yeah. but channel 40 is running in the background. Okay. And it, if someone hits on channel 40, I it'll can hear cut it. Through, yeah. Got a scan gauge. Yeah. So the scan gauge is on there purely because I wanted to monitor the uh, temperatures of both the um, intake and also the uh, radiator coolant to okay. make sure it's not overheating. Um, but at the same time, I just wanted to know how much, how much fuel I'm using. Yeah. How many liters per 100 k's and stuff, and then if any codes come up, I can read them straight away, right on the tracks, and then determine whether I can drive the car home or not. You have any problems? No, no, no problems at the moment with the uh, EFJ. Yep. First camera, permanent reversing camera that stays on 24/7 when the car is on. Um, that that's purely because at the back you can't really see much, yeah. so I can see exactly what's going on behind me. You drive forklifts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find this a lot easier to. Manipulate and drive around. It makes life easier. While well, you're if you get used to it, it will be. Yeah. I've got used to it. Yeah. Put the car into reverse. This secondary camera comes on as well as that. They're both wired up in series. Ah. So that's for the tow, tow hitch. If you're trying to reverse into tow yep. hitch. So you got your spot lights, LED, LED light. light bar, camping light. Oh, that's the round the side yep. and the fog light. And the fog lights. And Volt then. meters. Yep. So this is the uh, actually the secondary battery. So they're they're wired up in series. Is at 12.1 at the moment. And that's the uh, actual cranking battery, 11.7. Okay, so between the other two, there's 12.1. Yeah. Okay, so you, you got them running parallel, basically. Uh, yeah, in parallel. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I've got fuel. Fuel. So that just runs the auxiliary tank. So basically, when I flick the switch, it starts pumping fuel from the secondary tank into the primary tank. How much is the stock tank, and how much is the additional? The stock tank's 80 liters. The additional tank's 120. Whoa. Okay. So 200 like, liters. Yeah. So that's why I'm telling you the FJ is, mm. it weighs a lot with ex the extra tank yeah. and the batteries. Yeah. And on the back here, on your cargo rail, you got a fishing rod. Yeah, so like I said, I'm a Telescopic? Bit, yeah, telescopic fishing rod. It, it comes with me wherever I go. So whenever I feel like, just pop me down the beach, throw a line out. Yeah, so that's a nice, nice tall foot. Rightio, Q&A time. So my first question will be, for someone who bought a standard FJ Cruiser, what's the three first mods you would suggest well, to them to do? Well, since the FJ comes with the locker already, it's as standard, um, the essentials are pretty much your, your tyres, your lift, and uh, your bull bar at the front of the car. Okay, so tyres, lift, and bar work, but bull bar being the main, yeah, main one. Yeah, bull bar is the main one. With the, ba <laughs> with the bash plate, I take it? Yeah, probably just get the bash plate. What is the one thing you must have when you go camping full driving? Uh, well, I shouldn't say this, but my missus, <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> yeah, I got to take my missus along, uh, just because it's something that, that me and her enjoy yep. doing together, but uh, for four-wheel driving purposes, uh, it's got to be your recovery gear. You need recovery to gear? Yeah, definitely yeah. your recovery gear. What's your next big mod for this vehicle? Uh, the next big mod would have to be the rear bar. I'm looking at getting a Red Eye Tech rear bar, which is basically a dual dual carrier at the back with the high lift jack mounted integrated into it. Yep. Uh, so that's basically what my next big mod is. For the top three trips in the FJ? Uh, one of them would have been Lano. These I know in particular order. Uh, so Lansdowne was a really nice trip and I got to go down to uh, Moore River with a couple of my friends. Uh, the next one would have to be when I went to Brunswick. I've, I've got to say the first time I went forward driving it's got to be one of my best trips as well. Even though I got stuck before I even got to the sand at, um, at Wilbinga. Yep. Uh, but it was it was one of the best learning 
learning curves that I ever did. And, uh, and it, the ball kept rolling from there. Yeah. So the first trip that I ever did in Wilbinga with my mates and got them teaching me, got me hooked. And uh, one mod after another, turned this FJ into what it is today. Oh, well, thank you very much for no bringing Ronnie. the thank FJ you. in. Thank yeah. you for having me. Highly requested vehicle as well. <laughs> um, so thanks for watching everyone. You can subscribe right here. And there's plenty of ideas in this FJ. Even I've picked up a few for this one. Um, I know it's not a modification with that coffee thing, that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to look into that. Uh, but yeah, thanks again. Uh, you can get more details on the stuff that's on this vehicle in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.